This episode, we're going to learn how to design and animate a first impressions area using Envision Studio. What you see on the screen is our final result, and you can grab the project files in the description below. Jumping right into Envision Studio, you're going to want to hit the A key on your keyboard, and that will pull up the artboards that you could select. We're going to be using the 1920 by 1080 or the Dell XPS 15. And from here, I want to start with the background of our first impressions area. We pulled an image from Unsplash, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up for you. Unsplash is a website where you can grab free high res images and if we search for wilderness because that's the theme we're kind of going for we can look and find the specific image that we're looking for. So we've selected this image by Scott Osborne and using Unsplash uh, they do not require you to give credit but in this video, we're going to go ahead and give credit to Scott Osborne. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and find the image you want to use and click the download free button. This will give you a modal by Unsplash saying crediting is not required, but it is appreciated. It allows photographers to gain exposure, copy the text below or embed a credit badge. We're not going to embed a credit badge because we're not releasing this out to the public. We're just going to mention him in this video and hopefully he sees it. We're going to select the artboard and hit this plus sign on the top left and we're going to import an image. Go ahead and import your image and in this case we do need to size this down so go ahead and select the image. Let's zoom out a bit and bring this to a better perspective for us to see. Let's go ahead and see if we could fit it in the artboard. Perfect. And center that. We're going to go ahead and flip this so we'll just hit that there and then just size it corresponding to how you wanted it now when working with full background images you need to keep in mind that when you layer text over it it isn't going to pop as much and i'll show you what i mean by adding a text layer let's go ahead and select that and we'll just type in hello and we're going to make this white so we want this to pop a lot more um and if you're using a different image in this case, it, it works fine because of the background here is a little dark. But if you kind of blend it in uh, to the mountains or even this section over here, it doesn't stand out as much as we want it to. And in that case, what we want to do is layer the background image with a darker layer um, and then lower the opacity. So what we could do is select a rectangle, make it the same width of our artboard, the width and height. And we could go ahead and select the fill to 000, which is black and lower the opacity to 25 pixels or 25 percent i'm sorry so this allows the image to still be visible but it dims it down so that our text that is going to lay over it can pop a lot more so now that we have our background and our foundation set we do want to start layering our navigation our headline tags and etc what we want to do first is add a grid system so in envision studio once you select the artboard they've got a layout grid for you so what we're going to do is we're going to select the four column grid, but customize it a little. What we want is an eight column grid. So go ahead and select the menu and change this to eight. That's going to give us eight different columns, but we do want our margins uh, from the left and right edges to be a lot larger. And we're going to go ahead and set that to 120. So that looks great for our layouts. Now we could go ahead and get started on the navigation. So our fake company name for this is called Discover. We're going to go ahead and add the logo in using a text layer. And we're going to write discover in all caps. And the font that we're going to be using today would be called circular. So you can find that online and purchase it if you want. We're going to go ahead and bump up the font weight to bold. And we're going to move this to be 75 pixels from the top and set it to the very edge of our um, column or layout grid. So let's go ahead and make that 75. If you hit the shift key and go up and down with the arrow key, that does um, increase or decrease the margins by 10. So let's go ahead and set that 75. Now the next thing that we're going to do is duplicate this and add our navigation items. So let's go ahead and do that using option shift and drag it to the right side. We're going to make this about. We're going to then say stories. My spelling stories, correct? Stories. I have bad spelling stories. 
go ahead and duplicate this and let's do it again. And then learn and growth. So the margins we want to set between each navigation item would be 100 pixels. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got 72.5. Let's fix that to 107. And I'm hitting the option key and having a layer selected, you hover over another layer and it tells you the margins in between. I'm going to do the same for learn at 100 and for growth, 102, 100. Now I want to group all these navigation items and I want to center them in the middle of the entire artboard. So let's go ahead and group them up and center them. Oh, they're not grouped. Uh, go ahead and group them and center oh, wrong one. Center them. Looking at this now, I think that the 16 pixels on each element's not, or each navigation item is not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 20. And we still need to fix the margins. So let's go ahead and ungroup and fix these margins in between. It's going to be at 90. That's a hundred. That's a hundred or that's 97. And then from this 30, hundred. So go ahead and group these back up and center them again. Perfect. Now we want it to be aligned with our discover logo. So what we could do is align it as best as possible. And we know that it's aligned here, but once these items are grouped, we could shift click on discover to uh, grab all of these elements. And then if we hit the sectioning or the centering or aligning keys, um, I can't even come up with a name for them and go ahead and select center that will center it for us. But since they're already centered, it didn't really do much. The last thing we want to do is add that contact button. So go ahead and copy discover all the way to the right side and type in contact. Go ahead and select that and center it just in case. Oh, wrong key. And there we go. That's centered. So let's go ahead and turn off this uh, grid to see how it looks like so far. And so far, so good. If we go ahead and play it, it'll give us. Um, so Envision comes in with uh, these artboards and sorry, not artboards. They come with these frames that they give us whenever we preview something. I hate it. So what you could do to disable this is in the settings. Uh, menu over here, go ahead and select preset and the Dell XPS 15. What you want to do is um, override these settings and then for the preset, click custom um, and that kind of just removes it. So I really don't like them. So looking at it, everything looks centered and the margins look really nice. So let's go ahead and move on to our main message. Go ahead and click the plus sign again, select text and let's type that in. We're going to create two different text areas, one that will be the first line and the second line, and then the animation. Um, it'll make a lot more sense when we get to the animation of why I'm creating two separate lines. So the first text layer is going to say experience your, so let's go ahead and write that. And we're going to bump this up to 130 pixels like so. Let's go ahead and turn this grid back on and move this to the far left. And we want to copy it using the option and shift key and just drag it down. And it's going to say next chapter. Great. Go ahead and align these and we're just going to align it to the far left side of the column and let's group these and we want it to be 160 pixels, 175 pixel ish um, from the navigation. So clicking both, we're going to hit the option key and hover over discover. And we already have it at 175. I think that's a good margin. So we're just going to leave it there. Uh, let's go ahead and add this period in so we could look a little better. Just move it there. That looks great. If we turn off the layout grid and preview this, I think it looks great. The text does pop up knowing that we have that darker opacity layer hovering over the background image. So let's continue on. Now, the next thing we want to do is add the find out more button or the button that will take users to the next page or have them scroll down. What we're going to do is we're going to select the logo and we're going to option shift drag all the way down and we're going to bump this up to 26 pixels. And in here, we're going to write find out more. 
let's go ahead and line this up with our nifty layout grid and 110 pixels uh, from the top now we do have a messaging area here um, and when it comes to grouping these items we do want to experience your next chapter and to find out more to be closer together uh, rather than the paragraph text down below so having it at 110 pixels might be a little too much space so let's push that up a little I think 90 works great uh, we could leave it at 90 and see how it looks ultimately once we add the other paragraph now the find out more did have an underline to it so that it could kind of show that it is a clickable link so let's go ahead and add that what we could do here is select the plus sign add a path and let's add a path that's the same width as the find out more so we could just estimate for now and hit enter and then what we could do is find the width um, remind me tomorrow that's a bad habit what we could do is find the width of the find out more which is 693 pixels and make it the same width of our um, thing actually that's not how it works sorry not the width is 169 and then the path is 169 also I was looking at the Y so 169 as well great let's zoom this in and see if we could align it correctly okay I'm just gonna click this and push it to the far left and have it line perfectly now we're gonna bump this up to five pixels for its weight and that will make it the that'll make the stroke a lot greater so let's just drag this down a little I think that's good now the yellow that I am using is this one right here the f3ca3e I think it works really well because it isn't too yellow nor is it uh, too orangey or reddish so I think that works great let's go ahead and turn off this grid and view how it looks Um, I think the border is a little too thick and too close to the find out more. So what I want to do is bump this down to four and maybe bring it down just a bit. And I think that works. So let's go ahead and preview again. I think that works just a bit better. So we've got our navigation. We've got our headline. We've got our link. We need to add a paragraph text. And we also had this tiny little message here that says your future self. So let's go ahead and add those and move on to the animations. Now the next thing we want to do is add that paragraph text. So we're going to go to the top left and insert a text layer. And from here, we're just going to use some lorem epsom text. We're not that creative, unfortunately. So let me go ahead and grab that. Having grabbed that epsom text, we're going to go ahead and paste it. And in the far right section, what we could do is change the, um, I'm not sure if this has a name to it, but just switch it to wrap. And what that will do is allow us to wrap the text. So go ahead and select that. And now we could kind of break this text and add a width that we want. And that will ultimately just break or wrap the text around. So what we're going to do is re-enable the eight point column grid. And we want to bring this as a width of three columns. And we also want to fix the line height. The line height doesn't really look all that well in this one. So the default that I came with from 20 pixels um, font size was 25, but we're going to double it uh, from the font size to 40. And I think that will give it a much better space, especially for a first impressions area, especially for a first impression area. You want it to be legible and very easy on the user to spot. Now, having everything in place, we do want to add one more message, which said having your future self here or your future self here. And what we had was a circle with a pen tool line drawn down and then the text that said your future self. So let's go ahead and make that. Having zoomed into the person's shoes, go ahead and select the plus sign and add an ellipse. And 35 by 35 works pretty well. Now the fill is already added. What we want to do is disable that and make a border. Our border is going to be white and we could bump this up to three. Let's do one, two, three, three works well. I think that it's just a tiny bit too big. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. Let's do 20 pixels and the weight of it to two. Okay, I think that works pretty well. So go ahead and just drag it over the shoe. Now the pen tool, we're gonna select in the plus sign. Is it plus sign? What is this? If we hover over it, will it tell us? Insert layer or add comment. Okay, we're just gonna insert a layer and we're gonna select a path. 
Now I want the message to come from down from up here at an angle to this section and then moved here. So we're going to start here, make a straight line and we can always edit this like so. I do want to shrink this section down a bit to come up right here, but we're going to click enter and then edit that after. So once we selected enter, go ahead and double tap this again and then grab this and just move it to the right a bit. I think that works. We want to make this line the same width and the same color as our circle. So let's go ahead and do so. Disable the pen tool and the border. We want to make it a white border with a weight of two. Now for our text, let's go ahead and add a new text layer. And we are going to say your future self. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and bump this down because it is in a very important message. We can make this the smallest message on the screen. Let's go ahead and make it 16 pixels and align this. I think a 8.5 is good, but let's make it 6.5. Great. So let's go ahead and zoom this out and see how it looks. Don't forget to disable the layout grid so that we could have optimum viewing. And I think it looks terrific. Now the next part is the animations. However, that will be split up into episode two, which will come out in the next few days. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want more content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Part two will come out in the next few days. Have a wonderful day.